What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video and welcome to my dream shop. Yes, that's right. I have bought a new shop. It is super exciting. It's also unbelievably loud out here. So before I give you all the details, let's head inside so you can actually hear what I'm saying. All right, so we're right on the other side of the big roll top door where you enter the shop. And that honestly is one of my things I am most excited about finally having a big door to load in materials and tools. If you guys have seen my other shop, watch the shop build series over there. You'll know I just have a single man door entry and exit there. So getting in sheets of plywood and stuff like that is a total pain. So I can also back my truck in here. So my plan is to leave enough room to back my truck in completely and then have enough in feed for the table saw so I can pull a sheet of plywood right out of my truck bed and cut it down on the table saw, which should be pretty awesome. The other thing this shop has that my other one doesn't is natural light. And to be honest, I'm a little mixed about natural light because this is essentially a woodworking studio, if you will. So having windows adds an element of variability to my lighting. I'm not sure that I really like. So these are really crappy windows, so I'll probably be replacing them. One thing you also might hear is that this roll top door is completely uninsulated and lets in a ton of sound, ton of road noise. There's also a car wash across the street, so super loud. And it also lets in a lot of heat. This thing just bakes in the sun. So that's another thing I would like to replace at some point because of the sound. Let's go ahead and move a little bit further back in the shop so you guys can see kind of the main shop area. All right, so we're a little further back in the shop here now. This is kind of basically where the table saw is gonna be. So again, material can come in through here. Usually the first tool it's gonna hit is the table saw or the miter saw which is going to be over here on this wall i'll show you guys that in a bit and then behind me is going to be where the cnc is there in that back corner and there's this weird kind of mezzanine thing that i guess the previous owners built out but it is super janky definitely not up to code i'm going to totally tear that out and get rid of that and really i'm going to be tearing out a lot of this stuff in here because this building was built in the 70s so a lot of this wiring is really old i don't know how much of it actually works a lot of the outlets are really just kind of worn out so you plug something in and it just wants to fall out there's definitely some questionable wiring stuff that the previous owner did like some of these lights are wired to an extension cord so <laughs> i have to plug that in from a junction box with an extension cord just really not anything that i want with this shop moving forward uh, there's also these weird kind of wall braces it seems like there's definitely a lot of kind of hydrostatic pressure on these concrete block walls because the outside of this is dirt kind of starting in this area so probably need to put in a french drain at some point outside and then i also want to talk to a structural engineer just to see if i could replace these humongous wooden wall braces with something like steel i-beam because as you can see these protrude out into the shop like four or five feet which is not great if i can't do that it just so happens that the space between the two of them would be perfect for plywood storage so with my cnc being in that back corner i kind of make lemonade out of lemons and store a bunch of plywood there another big item on the list is obviously going to be the ceiling because not only does it look terrible because this insulation is all exposed but this insulation has seen better days i don't know what has happened to it but a lot of it is torn up it almost looks like an animal's gone after it uh, it's missing in spots and just kind of nasty so my plan is to pull all of that out and then probably replace that with something like rock wool again for sound deadening and then as far as the ceiling i'm thinking of doing a drop ceiling because again this is essentially like a woodworking recording studio so echo is a big concern and if i did something like drywall or plywood on the ceiling that would just create a lot of echo in this space and a drop ceiling is pretty much perfect for that because you can get special tiles that absorb sound and should make it sound really good in here not to mention if i build out any kind of living space or office space on the second level that would help keep the shop noise from going up into those areas. So let's head over to kind of the central area of the shop and then kind of show you guys the hand tool area and where some of the other power tools are going to go. All right, so this is going to be kind of the main hub of the shop. Right where I'm standing is going to be the planer and drum sander. You'll see there's some issues with this floor. First of all, there is a floor drain here. I think the original owners were some sort of auto body shop or chop shop or something like that. And because there's a floor drain, the floor slopes in the area around the floor drain. Obviously, I don't need that. And that sloped floor would be a total pain to work around. And then the other issue with this floor is this, I guess, frame straightener is what I was told it was. It's essentially a steel I-beam that's been cast directly into this slab. So really, there is no 
getting rid of that. So my thought is to essentially build out some sort of platform across this entire area. I think that's gonna be really nice because I'm also gonna have my workbench and my assembly tables over kind of around this back wall. And I really don't like standing at my workbench and assembly table on concrete all day. It's just brutal on your joints. So having a wooden subfloor, I think is actually gonna be really nice to work on. The other thing to point out is this giant forced air heater here on the back wall. It takes up just a ridiculous amount of space. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I think I'm gonna use mini splits in this space as I've done in my past two shops. And since this building is gonna be pretty well insulated, they should easily be able to handle this amount of space. So from here, let's turn over to your left and I can kind of show you where miter saw station is gonna go and then some of the other tools. All right, so here to your left against this wall is where I'm gonna put my miter saw station. Again, I can kind of bring materials in and swing them around here, break them down and then do all of my milling and take them over to the assembly and workbench area. And I think that's gonna be a pretty good workflow. And then continuing on to the back, you can see I have a full laundry here, washer and dryer, which is definitely nice. And then also a slop sink, which I consider essential in a shop you know, for cleaning up finishing supplies and all that kind of thing. Just wash and glue off your hands, very convenient. And then behind me to your right is the finishing booth. So uh, after it was a chop shop, it was a cabinet shop. And so they have this set up perfectly for finishing. That's what they used it for. And so let's head into there and I can show you my new finishing booth. All right, so as you can see, this is one of the more gross parts of this shop, but the potential here is just awesome. So to have a completely enclosed area for spraying finish, which is something I do on basically any project I can, is amazing. Uh, back here behind this wall is an exhaust fan, so that'll pull out any sort of fumes or overspray. I pretty much only use water-based finishes anyway, so that's not a big deal. And then I think the other thing I'm gonna keep in this space, because obviously this is pretty huge, is some of my metalworking equipment. Since this is its own enclosed room, that'll keep any sort of sparks or you know, metal debris from going out into the woodworking shop, which obviously hot metal and sparks and wood dust do not mix very well. So from here, I guess let's head over to the addition and I can show you kind of what I think is gonna be a storage area. All right, so this area is basically the newest part of the shop. This was added on at some later date. The slab is in much better shape in here, but still it's gonna require a lot of work to get this how I want it. As you can see, the insulation again looks terrible. It's got this really bad fluorescent lighting. If I haven't already mentioned it, I'm gonna be pulling out every bit of lighting in here and replacing it with LEDs, because obviously for what I do, LEDs are essential. As you might be able to see in the back, they left behind two pretty industrial compressors. Both of these compressors run on 220 and should be way more than I need, but that's pretty exciting to me because I've never really used a lot of air tools because I haven't had a great compressor. Plus, if I do add something like a wide belt sander later on down the line, Line. that needs good quality compressed air to run so I will have plenty of that here. So all of this particle board shelving is gonna go, it's all sagging and is just in really bad shape. And I'm gonna be replacing all of that with this awesome metal shelving from Craftsman. They've got a really nice line of industrial metal shelving, which should be pretty perfect for in here. Probably also gonna paint the walls just to get things cleaned up. And also we had some really crazy rain here in Western North Carolina about a month ago. And the one spot where a little bit of water came in was in this back corner. I'm gonna go ahead and try to address that with, I guess some hydraulics cement and other kind of waterproofing products. If you guys have any recommendations for that, let me know. That's not really something I've ever dealt with, but obviously I don't want water getting in here. That would not be good. The other thing I'm gonna put in this hallway is a little kind of home gym setup. And I think I'm gonna do a video on that, setting up basically a DIY home gym, you know, building a deadlift platform and, and some stuff like that. I have a bathroom with a shower, so it'll be great to be able to work out here at the shop and get to work. So one other thing I guess I'll mention while I'm here in the hallway, since the electrical panel is here behind you guys, is is this shop has 400 amp service, which is just a ton of power and it has three phase, which is great because some of those older machines, which I think would be a lot of fun to play around with, require three phase. And if you don't have something like a phase converter, which is very, very expensive, those tools can't be run. Any big machines I buy moving forward, I have the option to go three phase, which is awesome. So I guess from here, let's go ahead and move in to the living space and I can kind of show you guys the setup there. Then we can head up to the second level, which is basically the same footprint again, which is just insane. There's just tons of space here. So let's go ahead and head into the living space. All right, so welcome to what is essentially an apartment. Oh, shit, it's a wide angle, you probably saw me. Oh yeah, you're on there, buddy. 
You are on there. As I mentioned, the previous owner built out this space. It's actually a pretty cool setup. It's about a thousand square feet. It's got a full kitchen, master bath, and half bath, which is connected to the shop, which is really convenient. And it's also got a master bedroom. I'll probably set up my office in the bedroom for the time being. It's gonna be super convenient to actually have a kitchen here at the shop so I can make my lunch. This kitchen definitely needs a little bit of love. The previous owner had some interesting taste to say the least. I will probably do a kitchen remodel in here at some point. As I mentioned a little earlier, I'm considering doing some in-person classes here. And I actually think this would be a great space just to kind of hang out, have meals, and I'm considering building out some living space on the second level, which I'll show you in a minute. And that way people could come stay here, kind of do an all-inclusive thing. I really want to get this space set up nicely. Uh, it's got some interesting things to work around, really odd kind of trim details and this curved wall here, which I don't even know how to start to deal with, but I think it's got a lot of potential. So I guess speaking of the second level, let's go ahead and head up there and I can show you guys the attic space. All right, so the lighting is terrible up here, so apologize if it's hard to see, but this second floor is essentially the same footprint as the first level with the shop and the living space. Again, it's about 58 by 70, so about 4,000 square feet. And so the potential up here is just insane. All of this insulation you see on the floor here, that is directly above that living space. Again, the apartment is about 1,000 square feet, and so if I wanna build out some kind of guest accommodations for doing those classes, I should be able to fit like four bedrooms and three baths up here and have a really comfortable setup for people to stay here. And that's only a thousand square feet out of the 4,000 at my disposal. There are some definite issues up here though. As you can see, this whole building is just basically metal panels. If I were to build out any sort of living space, I'd pretty much have to do closed cell foam just to keep any moisture and condensation from happening. There's also just been seemingly a lot of movement on some of this. As you might be able to see, these trusses are kind of curved and bowed. So I think those probably need to be straightened out. There's no ridge vent, which is crazy to me. They vented the soffit, but not the ridge, so that hot air has nowhere to go. There's also another entry door from the outside on this kind of back wall, and it's currently inaccessible because again, that forced air duct goes up the side of the building and blocks the door, but since I'm probably gonna be removing that forced air system, I'm probably gonna get that door back in functional order, so that way I could load in any kind of long-term storage stuff or building materials when I get to building out this living space directly in there rather than having to <laughs> carry it up the stairs or figure out how to get it up through some of the kind of openings in the floor. And I guess speaking of which, that's something I haven't mentioned, let me show you kind of a bit of a funky detail here in the floor. So these two panels here actually come all the way open and I'll show you the framing kind of from the underside. But supposedly when this was a chop shop, they had this opening so that they could get cars up here, which is insane to me that this floor system would support a car. But I'm actually considering leaving one of these openings here because I'd like to do something similar to what my buddy Jay Bates did in his shop and set up some kind of DIY elevator system here. So that way, again, I can get stuff up here from the shop really easily. Since there's already a hole in this floor, it seems like that'd be kind of a fun project. So maybe I will get to that at some point down the line. Whew. So hopefully you guys are as excited about this as I am. Obviously, this is gonna be a massive amount of work, but finally I own my own shop space. So in case you didn't catch that during my previous shop build, I rent my current space. I decided to just basically take control of my own destiny a bit and look for some sort of commercial building. And this one just happened to kind of fall in my lap. And I think this is all the space I will ever need. So hopefully you guys are excited to follow along with this whole process. Obviously I will be finishing the tiny house first, but in the background, some of this work is gonna be getting done. I just wanted to go ahead and get this shop tour film just to show you guys what I have been so excited about. So if you guys would like to support this whole adventure, I would highly encourage you to check out my Patreon and YouTube membership programs. And if you're new here, go ahead and get subscribed and ring that notification bell so you don't miss all of my future videos. All right, thanks for watching y'all and until next time, happy building.